I've already done a video on this Tessa Asa Abloy from Spain that Tiffany gave me and in that video I showed that a Sparrow's Ultra Decoder like this can be inserted in and pushed back and it can open the shackle quite quickly using a bypass method. But today I want to show a probing method to decode an unknown combination. This has been set to a random combination by my wife using a random generator and I've placed a mark on my decoder. Now my shaft is a little bit bent but it's actually an advantage in this case because I want the probe to be a little bit to the right as I'm probing in between the wheels. Now I must say this lock's got some really good tolerances and it's quite difficult to get it in and to feel for those gaps and in fact this last wheel is just about impossible uh, and so I'll do the first three wheels but the last wheel I might just have to go through all, all the numbers manually and, and see which one it is to open. Okay so here I go I'm going to push it to the right of this wheel and you see how it goes in this much and I'm going to turn it to the next number see how much it goes in. Okay it goes in Ah, oh, okay, this goes in quite a lot more, okay, and so does this. So one and two, one, two, and three, is that correct? No, it's two and three. Okay, so two and three it goes in quite a bit and it's actually halfway in between two and three I've found. It's halfway between two numbers that there is a gap. Okay, so what happens is that if I show you numbers that go around, the ten numbers that go around from zero to nine, if it's halfway between two and three, that means that the other gap will be on the other side halfway between 7 and 8. What it will mean is the true gate is either 0 or 5, which is halfway between uh, this gap and this gap. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just check the other numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and to there, this one, and each of there, as expected, the seven, the seven goes down quite a bit. This side of the seven, where it's sort of all, almost going to the six territory, it doesn't really go there if, if I. You know, the, the gap sort of starts sort of more this side towards the 8. So I'm wondering if this is the false gap. The same with the 8. It doesn't really go to the... It's, it's halfway between 7 and 8, but it's not very wide. Whereas if I go to the 2 and 3. So that 2... Yeah, it goes um, more to the right to the bottom of two and we'll see if it goes right to the top of three yeah it does seem to so I've noticed that when that happens the true gate tends to be this one rather than this one so I think the first number here is zero on this lock. If I didn't know that it would either be 0 or 5 and I need to just go through the different combinations of, of 0 and 5. But okay let's go to the next wheel and we'll see if that random number generator really did put the first wheel as 0. Okay so, so this one goes in at 0 straight away. Hmm. And it seems to be quite a, 
a white gate. If it's 0 and 1, then I'm expecting 5 and 6 to be the other one. So let's go to 5 and 6 and see if that's true. Yep, it goes down. I'm trying to see how wide these gates are. Okay, it doesn't seem quite as wide as the 0 and 1. Um, hmm. Okay, let's try and put this down here. five and six is just a, a short gate I think so the one and two seem to be the wider gate so halfway between these ones should be should be eight I think eight is the true gate for this one okay let's go to the next one okay so put the probe down here It doesn't want to go down very far. I think two and three is quite wide. So if that's true, it means I should check the seven and eight. Um, okay, it doesn't seem quite as wide. I might be wrong. And the eight. It doesn't seem, seem as wide, so if that's two and three, then halfway would be zero or five. And again, if it's two and three, then the true one would be eight. That's the pattern I've noticed with this lock. So I think, I think it's zero, eight, zero. And now I have to try every number for this one. Now with this lock, to open this lock, I need to depress this shackle and let go again for it to open when it's on the right combination, otherwise it won't open. So I'm going to try one, two, th three, four, five, six, seven, and we've got to open. Okay, so that, that was a combination for this lock, zero, eight, zero, seven. And I've got an update about this lock. Now, what if you didn't have a Sparrows Ultra Decoder? Could you use something like a thin piece of metal that I cut out from a pop can or soda can or fizzy drink can? You know, just some uh, thin piece of aluminium that I cut with some kitchen scissors and I put a line on. And it turns out that, yep, if I, I've turned it to one on the first wheel, if I try and put this down, it goes down to this much, and yet if I go to two, see how much it goes down? It goes down that much. So you can use something like this, uh, which is really thin, and it will work. So it is possible to decode this lock without any special tools. Another thing I wanted to say about this lock, when I tried to shim it and couldn't shim it, I tried several different ways and it really looks as though this, um, the, the locking bar, when it's in the closed state, it gets locked so it can't actually retract so it makes it shim proof. So it's a really good lock. So you can't shim it, can't pull pick it because you have to turn it to the right combination and then instead of pulling you have to depress the shackle and release for it to open so why didn't they put extra warding in so that we couldn't fit tools down the side like here or here if they did that then the bypass method wouldn't work and the probing method wouldn't work also and it would be a really secure lock cheers